Hello and thank you for subscribing to InfoWars Tech. This is a channel where we explore new trends and technologies. And in this series, the IoT and IIoT, uh, we are looking at using Node-RED to create these flows, end-to-end -end flows. And um, as we know, Node-RED is a programming tool for wiring together hardware devices, APIs, and online services in new and interesting ways. So we've looked at multiple ways of how Node-RED could be used in an IIoT and an IoT setting. And today, uh, we're going to look at two new nodes called a file node and a CSV node. And the use case that we are trying to understand is you have uh, multiple sensors or devices sending simultaneously data at perhaps various intervals at 5 seconds or 10 seconds. We are capturing that data and then we are ingesting it into a CSV formatted file or a comma separated value file which can then be opened up in Excel or it can be um, highly, it's very useful to use that in that format. So this is a use case where uh, it applies to any industry, any uh, IIoT and IoT industry which um, would be getting this data and then perhaps making some transformation and then uh, putting it into a CSV formatted file. So let's um, go there and um, see how we can do that. So let me um, head over to my environment here which we have been using. If you've been following my tutorials, we've been using this environment. It's basically uh, running off a Docker uh, image of Node-RED. So very easy to set up, especially for these uh, POC type of uh, projects that um, I'm sharing with you. So the uh, first thing that you would like to do is uh, uh, look at the the overall flow and then uh, I will drill down into the file node and the CSV node which are new. The rest we have already covered in the previous tutorials. So the uh, file node um, it's actually the description is it writes message dot payload to a file. Uh, it can add to the end uh, or append or replace the existing content. Alternatively, it can delete the file, and uh, uh, we can quickly s go into the uh, the file node and see some of the options that are available to us. So let's open that up. Um, so. A very important uh, component here is the path so this needs to be correct and I'll explain how you can get this right. Uh, the actions in terms of appending to the end of the file or overriding it or actually deleting it so you have three options on how you can you want to handle it. I've left it to append because as new data comes in I want it to be added to the uh, subsequent lines. I also want a new line to be added so each uh, data entry is separated from the previous one. In terms of encoding uh, you can take the default uh, or I, I just took the UTF-8 but um, uh, depending on your use case you can use uh, a, as you can see a huge variety of different uh, standards that are available. And uh, finally the name which again uh, choosing depending on your use case you can um, choose a name and write that. So let's uh, go to a very important component here which is um, where that file would be written to right. So um, this is uh, the write file option we also have a read file. Um, so when you're talking about the write file you need to uh, remember we're running in a container so it needs to be able to write to the host so let me show you how that can be achieved. So remember this is forward data, forward slash data, forward slash, that's the name of the file that I created. Let's go to the command line and let me show you. When I ran this uh, Docker command, you can see here, and this is also given in the uh, Node-RED documentation. So it's very simple, just uh, you can run it from there. Uh, what you see here is that I'm adding my home infoverse um, to this uh, slash node underscore red underscore data. 
So this whole um, path gets mapped to the slash data. So uh, when I put the m input dot csv file, or in your case it could be you know, your name dot csv file, make sure that it's added to this directory so that it can be read. And uh, let me show you when we go here and I just do a pwd, you can see that it matches the home infoverse underscore node underscore red underscore data and that actually maps to the forward slash data and the name of the file and we just do like a ls here you'll notice that that file is present here right so that was just a quick um, uh, demonstration to show you um, that choosing this the and understanding how the path is mapped is, is very important and this applies to the when you're running node red off a container okay the other thing i just want to show you here quickly is um, you know how we get that file so when if i search for it you see you have a write file and a read file so this is the one that i'm choosing because i as the results come in i want them to be written to the uh, file similarly you might um, have a read file which will be the inverse in the sense that it would be reading uh, the contents of the file and then perhaps you're doing some uh, action on that so I took that and that's the right file I just changed the name here the other one that we want to look at is the CSV file uh, which is right here and this is uh, it converts between a CSV formatted string and its JavaScript object representation in either direction so again a very powerful node right here let's uh, look into the details how that's set up so the CSV file um, the first thing is the columns how you want that data to be represented right so I want first the timestamp to come in then the sensor 1 and sensor 2 and I, I'll explain how I'm getting those uh, then you can separate it so most common is comma but perhaps you might require a tab or a space or a semicolon either of these can be chosen or a customized one depending on how your environment is set up but you know uh, most common is a comma and you can give it some name so this could be multiple inputs to CSV right just just a name that I just made up okay and some of the um, other options are if it's CSV to object um, you can say skip the first line uh, or you can say you can select the first row contains the column names uh, you can parse numerical values um, if you select this you can include empty strings or you could in include null values and this is also this information is also available here so we can quickly go through that and uh, make sure that you're selecting the right options for me uh, for this um, tutorial I, I, I really don't need to go into any of these so I just uh, I did not select them in terms of the output you want one message per row or you want it all in a in a like a batch or array format so I, I wanted one message per row that's what I've selected in terms of the output um, there are some options so never send column headers always send column headers or send them once until uh, you get a message or reset so I said I selected never send column headers and I'll quickly show you why and in terms of new line I'm just choosing uh, Linux because I'm uh, I'm also running on a Linux system so let's save that and let me just show you quickly over here if um, we open up the M input you see that I already um, populated with these this value right so the timestamp sensor 1 sensor 2 so as the data comes in it will be written underneath these appended as we go on and um, then we can save it and open it in a CSV uh, or, or Excel document okay let's quit from here and let's go here okay uh, so uh, yeah we made some a small change to change the name and everything looks good 
Now, uh, I want to talk about the timestamp sensor 1, sensor 2, and this is how it will appear. So, let's see how we got that. So, over here in the inject node, uh, as we know, inject node can be used to um, sub inject or, or send data in various types. And uh, if you're following the, this, this series, uh, I covered in inject node in detail, and we looked at all these uh, so many options of the inject node so be sure to visit that uh, tutorial to get an uh, get an understanding of how the inject node works so here what I'm saying is um, in terms of the message the first one is in sensor 1 it's coming from sensor 1 the other one is coming from sensor 2 and the third one is just a timestamp so this might not be very accurate because remember uh, some data might be coming uh, on with a different timestamp but just to make it easier to understand what we're saying is that both these um, data points are coming at the same timestamp so we're just using for simplicity we're just using the same timestamp um, so here uh, we're sending for sensor 1 it's sending 7.5 value sensor 2 is sending 5.5 so these values are the ones that are also populated in in the CSV node um, column header so let's save that okay so this looks good I think we can um, go ahead and uh, look at the the function node because as these multiple uh, data points are coming in we need to be able to handle that data so let's let me open this up here and let me just do a quick copy and paste and I'll explain the bring it here okay sorry it just uh, was a little delayed okay so just get rid of this and repaste it okay great so what we're doing here is um, uh, we're defining a new variable T and we're just saving into it the new date in the ISO format again this is just a preference if you want to see it in in the ISO format but otherwise you can use the um, the standard timestamp value as well which inject would be sending uh, and then message dot payload gets dot timestamp gets the value of this uh, ISO formatted. Um, we define two variables data one and data two, which each are getting the value of coming in from sensor one and sensor two. And then we're returning uh, the three uh, messages right in that format. And uh, as that data comes in, uh, it would be saved to these uh, uh, message payloads and returned as those values that we saw uh, earlier so let's run that uh, let's deploy and let's run it okay so let's go and inject some data and let's see how what is the response that we get okay so let's um, run a few times okay so you see um, because I have um, in this debug node I have uh, uh, you know the payload options enabled that's why you're getting some more details here you can see uh, that we got a timestamp in ISO format we got uh, a value of sensor 1 and we got a value of sensor 2 and uh, the file that it's being writing to is the data m input dot CSV so let's head over there and let's do a less on this file and you can see that uh, you got that timestamp comma 7.5 which came from sensor 1 and then sensor 2 and um, similarly it, it's populating it right again this uh, doesn't look um, uh, very useful because we're just sending the same data so we're just going to make a quick uh, change to that and uh, then we can um, see how that 
that's get populated okay let's open it with vi just make a quick change remove those uh, data elements and then we can start from fresh from a fresh file okay so that's good let's just quickly review it good it's empty let's go here and let's make a change in the input node and let's uh, do a quick uh, like an expression to generate those random numbers and we can then send them out at uh, certain uh, timestamps or, or certain intervals I'm sorry so let's select this uh, the first one we can call uh, in fact let's uh, let's make it a little more copy one here select the J expression okay this remains the same that's fine let's save that oh just a second sorry I uh, let's let's just put an interval so that it can start sending every five seconds as an example again uh, you know it all depends on the use case uh, it might be every 10 seconds it might be every uh, every minute it, it entirely depends on that so let's try it um, to redeploy and send that data out and let's see how that responds so so we should be now getting data from those two sensors every five minutes so let's uh, head over here and what we can do is we can just tail the end of this file to see as that data comes in so you can see uh, we have a timestamp uh, followed by sensor 1 and then followed by sensor 2 okay and let's go here and perhaps we can now let it run for it's already run for a few seconds let's let's make this now okay and let's redeploy and you can see that um, this this is now populated with a lot of data right coming in On this side, we we, we see that uh, the debug is uh, is captured all that data as well. Uh, so another way to quickly check that is let's open up uh, an Excel uh, like uh, application called LibreOffice, and uh, let's open that file. system seems to be running a little slow okay we're there let's say open okay so here it's asking uh, character set that's what we chose um, from row first uh, yes I want comma separated or you know as we saw earlier we could have selected tab or semicolon depending on how your environment is set up for reading these files and then let's say OK and um, let's see how that displays so perfect as you can see uh, we have this very nicely formatted uh, data coming in from sensor 1 and sensor 2 and uh, as well as the timestamp at which um, these uh, readings were received 
So this was a uh, you know quick uh, flow showing a very useful uh, and and uh, you know real world use case where multiple sensors, multiple devices are sending data at at different intervals. We are capturing the time that um, uh, was received as well as the data, and uh, the the function node can be used to add or make some transformations to that data. Um, and um, populate a CSV file, which can then be shared in that organization, stored, uh, you know, make made additional um, decisions based on the on the data that we've captured. So uh, thank you for watching. That's um, uh, what I wanted to cover in this uh, short tutorial. Um, be sure to go back and then have a look at the uh, other tutorials that uh, I did on inject node and the function node to get a full understanding of this end-to-end -end flow. So I thank you again for watching and stay tuned for more options and more videos that are uh, I'll, I'll be creating on uh, Node-RED in the IoT and IIoT uh, industry. Thank you for watching.